Ah non, rosa bi dadi, eh, ni. Si, si, dadi. Ai, orma ke sarga ke segule, shuga goshi dadi rusa bi. Ak vega dadi, eh. Ah, ok, vi ghe fete pe termini de tot. Sigur, da, ce nu ghe sigur. Da, es camere bi? Bogatii bani, ruse bi. Ruse bi? Su bolom de segria, ce mu dau, su bolom de. Su plis bolom de, su egria. Ai es clar ce bi. Ce si mie hoi, mare gavac, ca sa baie fie arbi mușeau, s-a rog. Ai la sa-i 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 Ce să le crevi cu izgaga, ce să merec, ce să le scrie de noi. Kivi lives in Kweshe, a small village in Georgia, located about 50 km from the country's capital, Tbilisi. The population is over 200, many of whom are farmers, like Givi. Life here may seem quiet, but over the last decade, with village and many others have been at the epicenter of geopolitical tensions. Kveshi is situated near the de facto line that separates Georgian-controlled territory from South Ossetia, one of two breakaway regions neighboring Russia. The other breakaway region, Abkhazia, lies along the sea coast. Both regions have declared independence, a claim that is recognized only by Russia and a few other countries. Moscow's recognition came 15 years ago after the 2008 war between Russia and Georgia. As part of that conflict, Russian forces invaded Georgian territory. Although they subsequently left most of Georgia, they stayed in South Ossetia and Abkhazia. Before the war, the Russians were there as peacekeepers. Now they are taking a more active role. Since 2008, largely ignored by the outside world, Russia has been building fences, military camps and observation points in areas near the line of separation. Along the line, villagers have lost access to homes and fields that lie on the other side. This process has come to be known as borderization. Now in Hurvaleti, people tend to call this place a microcosm of borderization. This is because most of the problems that are somehow related to borderization, they are present here. This place is all surrounded by the uh, special installations uh, that are associated with the borderization. So, for example, right now behind us you can see barrack where the Russian border guards are stationed. Next to them is the fence. And this all happens here at the schoolyard where we are now present. One of the local teachers, she told me that often during the lesson they can actually observe from the window Russian border guards. They can see what's happening on a regular basis. Kurvaleti is a place where almost every single resident lost either portion or fully the farmland uh, that they used to access before the borderization started. Many of the locals got detained, some of them several times. People have problems with access to the cemetery, they have problems with uh, letting their cows walk around. This is all because Hurvaleti is very much surrounded by what the Russian side is calling a border. And because of that, it's locked between different positions and different installations. 
A few dozen meters from the school lives Nora. After the fence moved, she lost most of her garden. Her house now is just on the line of separation, surrounded by barbed wire fences and overseen by a Russian military watchtower. Is <laughs> It's not a queen. It's 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 a Around 60,000 people live next to the line of separation, almost evenly divided between the two sides. If tensions rise again, they will be among the first affected. After Russia invaded Ukraine, it redeployed some of its troops in Sarvasidia to the front. Moscow has subsequently sought to avoid escalating tensions. Paradoxically, the war in Ukraine has brought a temporary sense of come here. Although incidents and borderization actions persisted, they were less severe and caused less suffering for people living along the line of separation. Yet, the apparent calm can be deceiving. It became evident in March 2023, when tens of thousands took to the streets in downtown Tbilisi to voice their dissent from government policies. Russia swiftly denounced the rallies. It also held military exercises in the breakaway regions.
We're now in Gugutti Antkari, which is a Georgian village located right next to the line of separation with South Ossetia. Uh, you can see that the area is fenced and there are also barbed wires to prevent people from crossing from one side to another. In fact, this place used to be one of the roads that was connecting this village with the nearby places settled by ethnic Georgians at that time before the war and also ethnic Ossetians. And with green sign, you can see them in many places along the line of separation. They are to alert any people that we are very close to the line and we can, in fact, get fined or even detained for crossing the line. Along the fence that cuts through Gukuti Antkari, there are several burned down houses. Families are afraid of returning and repairing their homes due to proximity to the volatile line of separation, with Russian soldiers patrolling on the other side regularly. They also question whether the line will move further into Georgian territory. When they visit what remains of their homes, they have to do so accompanied by the police. One such person is Ketevan, the owner of this house. She fled her home during the 2008 war. Since then, she has not been able to return, afraid of the fence that was erected right next to the building and which crosses the garden. She now lives with other displaced persons some kilometers away from the fence in an old school. It is still unclear whether the relative calm in South Ossetia now will last or whether relations will improve between South Ossetia and Georgia proper, but any new tensions would certainly undermine prospects for anything of the sort. A number of policy actions could measurably improve the lives of people living in these areas. They include easing travel restrictions, resuming trade and economic links, and keeping crossing points between the sites open. Steps like this would make the area more stable and give hope to people whose lives and homes are overshadowed by this long-lasting and often forgotten conflict.